Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, the Dub Dog and I have our longest revival yet. And hopefully, that's not in length of the video. It's the longest vehicle yet. It's a checker cab. Did you know they made long ones? Yeah. I think they use them for airports. This thing's got more doors than anything we've worked on. It's got more rocker panel. It doesn't have more horsepower. Hopefully, it doesn't have more rust. But uh, it takes up more length on a trailer than probably everything that we've ever hauled home including the rollback so we got the 40 foot gooseneck hooked up to white ryan here so it's woken up from its long slumber all winter and we haven't really used it but got tires checked oils checked she's full of fuel my trusty steed duff knows that when the 24 valve cummins never mind that thing over there when the 24 valve cummins is running and there's a trailer hooked up we're gonna go for an ride and he says I will not be missing out on that. Had one low tire here. We got batteries, we got chains, we got booster pack, we got air compressor. I'm sure we're forgetting something, right Duff? All right, nice overcast day, beginning of March. I don't think it's gonna take up all the trailer, but it's gonna take up a lot of it. All right, you driving or am I? I guess I will, no thumbs, gotcha. Got the limo home, burned a bunch of fuel. Oh yeah, we picked up this cute little, I don't know. I think uh, those are 36 to 30, oh, they're 36s. They got the bolt-on wishbone. 36 wishbones, so 36 rear axle, wide fives. Somebody uh, welded 15 inch rims on 16 inch hoops. So that's handy. We could find some 15 inch tires and make some rollers. But they uh, cut up those torsion bar, or those uh, wishbones, so. But it's got juice brakes. No, they're mechanical brakes on the front. And I'm guessing wide five, so that's another 35 Ford axle and wishbone. So, and there's part of a cross member, and there should be a VIN number on there. So, some pieces didn't give much for it. But anyway, let's get this thing unloaded. Try not to wreck anything or kill anybody. No guarantees. Chin's on his way. Maybe he'll get here. Him and Pays will help. Probably not though. Try not to die. We could pull it off with a tow roller, but we don't have one. The telehandler, I don't think I'll lift it. And there's no hitch on the back. And if I pull it with a chain, it's gonna come wheeling at the bobcat. Tow truck, then I'd have to get it on the trailer. We're just gonna try to freehand it, see if it rolls. Anyway. nothing line me up at the ramps and don't get in the way here load up load up let's go you haven't checked this thing out yet let's go for a ride come on sucker this thing don't run but at least you won't get run over this way brakes are rock hard oh now the brakes move but they don't feel good hopefully we didn't lock anything up huh i don't think it's gonna roll bro. Oh. All right, we're gonna have to get some heavy equipment. Duff, what do you think of that thing? A lot of room for activities, eh? So much room for activities. Should have been look at all this floor all space. So much. With aerobics in here. So many activities. Well, as you see, I couldn't push it by hand. We got a tow truck. I was driving Bernie around running errands earlier today, so let's see if Bernie's up to the task. I don't know if it'll go high enough. We'll figure something out. It's gonna work. We got the beacons on and everything. The old twin Sonics running on Bernie. Uh, I can't lift it up really much higher, but 
all you do is pull it ahead and I didn't want it banging into whatever was pulling it ahead down the ramp so this strap should pull tension on it pull it ahead hope the park brake holds on Bernie and then we'll uh, throw the ramps back in everybody needs a tow truck in their life how freaking majestic is that Good, huh, Duff? Yeah, Casper, he's all right, too. And White Lightning. And White Ryan. Oh, and the Cowboy Cadillac. And Bur I got a lot of white pickups here. All right, let's see if we can't get this thing backed in the shop. That might be interesting, because the wheels seem to want to turn now. Let's see if Bernie's up to the task. Of course it is. Oh, I love me a good 390 and a four-speed. Oh, Bernie, he's a champ. This thing must have one tire lower than the other, clearly, because as soon as I want to go straight, it wants to turn. So I had to get out and steer it a bunch. If only my best friend had opposable thumbs, he could have steered it in for us. But anyway, we got her in here, and I don't know if we're gonna put it on the lift right away and look at the bottom side or not. I noticed when I had the back end lifted up with Bernie, uh, the driver's door wouldn't open. So there might be some flex, imagine that, in a. 35 foot long vehicle. We're gonna have to measure it. It's, I took the 40 foot gooseneck thinking I would have no room and there was enough room for that chassis. So it's not as long as I thought it would be. That's what she said. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> but anywho, let's uh, rip into this thing. Today we're gonna see if we can't get our first limousine running. Or it's a aero bus, or it's a bus. It's a checker cab. You know what it does check? A lot of the boxes. Limo, airport, prison, prom, wedding, funeral, you name it. Bus, school, yellow. So story on this thing is, it's, they told me, a 1974 checker aero bus. And this is supposed to have a small block Chevy and a turbo 400 that ran when parked a couple years ago. So... We know a couple usually means 10 plus. It's supposed to have a turbo 400. It's supposed to be bad, slips. It's supposed to have a nine inch. When I hooked up the chain on the trailer, it's definitely not a nine inch. I don't know much about checkers, but let's take a look at this thing. I know it's got a small block Chevy and we know a little bit more than nothing about those. And we don't know anything about automatic, automatic transmissions except for how to change them out. So let's look this thing over. So yeah, it's big. It's long, it's not as long as I thought. The 40 foot trailer was overkill. It's got dual headlights. I think everybody had to put those in 1958 and Checker just rolled it, went forever. They kind of got that 55 Chevy look to them. They use a lot of other people's parts. So we'll find out some of that. Obviously it's got a GM drivetrain. It looked like a GM steering wheel because obviously I had to steer it in here. 
it's got this cool CMC. What is that? Christian McCaffrey? Isn't he the running back for the 49ers? Uh, checker cab, checker marathon cab. I don't know. See it. Checker Motor Corporation. Brilliant duff. Brilliant. Anyway, it's things, since it's not a conversion, I assume that they made them themselves. This thing is, it's, it's not super full of mud that I noticed anyway. Uh, I'm guessing they had to put marker lights on in what, 68 when that came out. Oh, and they are kind of dimpled in there. So it's not like they just added them as an afterthought, which is kind of what they look like they are. There's a little hooey there. I don't know if this thing's been repainted or not, or if that's original airport yellow. They couldn't tell me what airport it come from, so that was a little disappointing. We don't have a title, but since it was never on the road, hopefully we can get a title. Clearly we need to do some work on the mirror. There's a little bit of sealant coming loose in the drip rail. This is where they seamed it, right here. I could see some bolts through the inside and then back there so i'm guessing they just took a regular station wagon and stretched her out eight doors well nine technically uh, they did make a seven door option as well so one less row of doors and it's got a little bump out back here in the quarter panel speaking of bump outs we got a little bondo coming out there i don't know if that's factory or if that's been repaired bernie maybe did a little work on the bumper but it wasn't that good a bumper anyway Maybe a DRC, KAAP, D and Z was uh, who owned this thing. There's a the fuel filler. Big, uh, obnoxious, ugly backup lights. Looks like we're missing both the taillight lenses. They were all about these terrible bicycle reflectors. Looks like it's got a roll down rear window. It's got some, oh, that's built into the window. The bars, 91, it had something going on. So I don't know if this was to keep luggage from flying around or unruly children or what, but clearly they didn't want whatever was back there breaking out the windows. It's got some giant 715 Coopers. I think those are uh, 10 ply. Anyway, a couple of them are flat. Had to pump them up, but we need some heavy duty tires for this thing. Little hooey back there. I thought there'd be more hooeys for a big car. A little one there, a little rust in the, uh, Rocker panel down there, hey Duff. Other than that, they said the floors are bad, but it's got carpet in it. So it can't be that bad. Missing a mirror here, missing the antennae. I'm guessing there was a, oh no, there was an Aerobus emblem there at one point. Dang it, a couple of hooies in that fender. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should we paint this thing? This thing would be cool. I don't know why. It'd be really cool. We put a blower motor in it, eh, Duff? Wanna open that hood? You got this. Jeez, it didn't even look like it took you any effort. So, AC condenser. Sure enough, AC compressor right there. Looks like she's got a dual reservoir master cylinder. That looks GM-esque. Power booster looks GM-esque. I don't know what the radiator is. It's a vertical flow instead of a cross flow. So who knows where they got that from, but everything else looks GM. Oh, I got the colostomy bag over here. I think that was, did they take that from Mopar? Chrysler, I don't know. A lot of weeds going on down here. Ramhorn manifolds. Quadrajet, I would assume, maybe. Could just be a two barrel. We'll see what this thing says. Oh, that's a Wix. A Wix label, no, WK label. Should be a 350 if it's the original engine. That's all you could get at them. Oh, 76. I was way off. Well, somebody could have swapped this out. Points ignition still, no HEI. It's got, huh, this is interesting. A later quadrajet that's got the later one, you could tell because it's got the torque screws and it's got this breather up here. Again, somebody could have changed this. Nobody's rounded off that hex, although they've tried. Nobody's twisted the line. And then it's got the electric choke, so that's later. I'm surprised being a 76, it doesn't have HEI. Even if it's a 74, I thought it would have HEI. But there again, there's your ballast resistor up there. Where's the dipstick, Jimmy? Ugh. Oh, somebody stole something that had some wires going to it out of it. Pretty good size wires, too, so... Oh, it had a second battery. Oh, that's the battery over there. Never mind. 
yeah, it's, it's kind of tight over there. They did have some emissions on it, horn, all that good stuff. There's the CMC, Checkers Motor Corporation. Kalamazoo, Michigan. It's got a 3.5 axle, so I don't know, Dana 35 or has it got 350? So the only options you get on these things, the motor number, trans, so I'm guessing HM is hydromatic. Axle, 3.5, probably a 350 ratio. Brakes, CM, uh, power and drums, maybe? And steering, I suppose you could get power steering. Yep, it's got power steering. And generator and alternator, it's got an alternator. I suppose they had different amperages. Color, I'll have to look that up. V804 and trim 30, which is probably nothing. It does kind of look oversprayed. And I'm guessing this thing was black originally. If I were to be taking bets or a really dark green. Oh, that's dark green. That's like military green. Maybe this thing was a military rig. Could be. All right, let's throw a battery in it. See if we can't get her cranking over. Hook up a boat tank. We should probably fix that overflow for the rad meat or two. And check the dipstick and the coolant. Let's do that first before we forget. Jimmy, where is the dipstick? There's the tranny dipstick. Dipstick! In red back there. There is a brake line that's not hooked up. How are you supposed to check the oil? Ew, oh, and it's all thorny. I should probably get some gloves. But what fun would that be? That's definitely why you don't pull on that one. Ouch. Oh, there's the dipstick tube and no dipstick. And there's the brake line that's plugged off with a grease zerk. That's a new one. You can see the end of the brake line. And then right to the left of it is a grease zerk splooshed into that T-fitting splooged screwed into that t-fitting so we're gonna be doing some brake work if we get her running i guess we're gonna have to find a dipstick good thing we got small blocks no dipstick is there one on the stand of extra parts nope that van one's gonna be too long hopefully this one's the same what's this 55 chevy 265 give her a whirl how did dipsticks just go missing Somebody was definitely not thinking with their dipstick. Whew. She's way up the stick. If we get her to fire, we might think about draining that, putting five quarts in there and seeing where it's at. This might be too long of a dipstick, but I doubt it. But hey, at least it's got oil in it. Coolant, on the other hand. Ouch, I got all these freaking, freaking pricklies in my freaking, freaking fingers. And freaking, freaking dirt. Bone dry. No, oh, itself. Check that. I'm gonna go pull these out of my hand and give that 265 its dipstick back and pull the rest of those weeds out with gloves. First things first, huh, Duff? Yeah. Let's get these weeds out of here and do it with some gloves. Oh, this is so much easier on my baby hands now that I got gloves out. Keep them nice, soft, and supple. That's why I like washing the dishes by hand. You guys know better. Paper plates, we don't do dishes. Sorry, Greta. How dare you? If we get this thing running, maybe all this stuff will just burn right off. What? It's got a smog pump? One day we should just plug one of those things into the air cleaner and see if we get more horsepower. We need a dyno, who's got a dyno laying around for cheap? I'm guessing there is no such thing as a cheap dyno. It would be handy to have one, you know, for science. For, for science. science! We should have cleaned this out while it was outside. Story of my life. Oh, let's hook that vacuum hose up to that. That vacuum hose is unhooked. So many vacuum hoses are unhooked. I guess that one goes to the Turbo 400. All right. I think I'm gonna go underneath and unhook the fuel line from the tank that's going to the fuel pump. I believe they said they had it running off of a nurse tank, boat tank. Auxiliary tank, if you will. So I'm guessing it's already unhooked, but let's double check. Maybe they hooked it up. Maybe they lied to me. We may never know. You know, you could have been doing something instead of just laying there watching me the whole time. So glad we got you that dog bit uh, that you've uh, laid on about four times. What a goon. All right, found my stash. 
These ones look cheesier than normal instead of the regular nut on the bottom. They're just threaded into this lead or whatever it is. Yep, tastes like paint chips. Never mind Mojo, he's back there doing the Lord's work. Never mind Mojo, he's back there doing the Lord's work, turning brake drums on a Cadillac. Sounds like that one's pretty true. The last one was wow, 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 wow. Oh. Get these Irwin, what are they called? Power slot? Side cutters? Like, I swear you could cut like a 3 8 piece of rod off. They're so good. Not a paid promotion, sponsorship, anything. Cable's just long enough. Not a very heavy cable. If I were to replace it, I'd put a bigger one on. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> we use Mojo's background noise to uh, use this moment to tell you about Mortski merch. Available at Mortski.com. Get yourself a ball cap. We got the uh, Cinco de Drinko Dirty Ball Cap competition coming up uh, May 5th. And you gotta have yourself a Mortski cap to enter in that. And uh, the reason they remind me of this is because we got these sweet hoodies. They got pockets down here for keeping your snacks in or your tools or whatever. And then we got shirts, we got banners. We got a fresh batch of the uh, Mountain Dew banners if you're into that stuff. Some people requested it. We sold out of the first ones. And we got crown banners. We got low life banners. We got church keys now. If you don't know what a church key is, you should get one. We got a couple of the SS5 and SS5S scrapers available yet. We got magnetic screwdrivers only in the flower version right now. We're waiting on some other ones. What else we got? We got decals. We got all kinds of decals. We got ball caps. We got beanie caps. Hurry up and get those while it's still cold out because I don't want to store them until next year. And yeah, go check out Mordski.com. Get yourself some of that uh, good old Mordsky merch so that we can keep buying junk. Or just go get a battery at Mordsky.com. Be a battery sponsor. Get yourself some publicity and uh, help us keep going on these revivals. And if somebody wants to buy us a wall to put up around Mojo so that he doesn't make a bunch of noise, we could do that too. Ooh. That is freaking genius. The colostomy bag over here. The cap is the old tin cover for the old glass fuses. That's genius. Who would have thought of that? Fits on there just perfect. I thought there was a box of fuses laying there. Cool. We got ourselves a capitiller that is yet to turn into a butterfly. He can do that in the track. That a battery hold though? Doesn't really look like it, but... Oh yeah, it is. Wow. I got a feeling there's some pretty crude stuff in these cars from the factory. And I'm guessing that bent up ready rod is factory equipment on a checker. All right, let's go hit the key, bump it over, see what happens. See if she turns over. I'm guessing the alternator is not going to charge because these wires are all off of the alternator. So, was somebody in the process of taking that off? Or is it bad and they unhooked it so it didn't drain the battery? We may never know. Hopefully we do find out though why. Heater hoses, all the good stuff. Alright, I'm going to go hit the key see what happens. I was going to tell you guys to keep an eye on the fan. Oh, it's got a factory flexi fan. What a deal. Oh, can't turn it over by hand. Belt slips. I'm too lazy to put pressure on the belt, so you guys just keep an eye out. And the inside power steering belt is off. Why is that? And this belt is crooked and on the wrong spot. So maybe they were taking the alternator loose to fix the belt situation? Who knows? Let's just get it running and then throw a belt, figure it out from there. I'm guessing these belts need replacing anywho. There you go, we'll put a little cyclops on the situation so you can keep an eye on that nice flexi fan. No flexi hoses though. No bueno on the uh, key situation. Also, being a GM steering column, looks like about a 70 to 72 full-size GM car. 
it's sticky like a GM steering wheel it's just sweating the horsepowers Blech. park reverse neutral drive S and L what does the S stand for slow look at this dash it's even got the, the checkered flag and checker in this in the fuel and uh, that's all you get you get a speedo and fuel with a checker and uh, also I'm guessing it was a company car and different people are driving it because they made this cute little label three-quarter was full and a quarter is empty so note self but she does go to 120 god I can't imagine driving this thing 120 mile an hour oh! it probably handles like a dream just in a straight line 40,000 miles and looking at that brake pedal that is original speaking of brake pedal there's a master cylinder reservoir cover for the later model that floor is soft and it's got a little mousy hole but back to my situation this key is it's like the rod isn't hooked up on the switch down there so we either gotta figure that out or we get the loser switch I suppose this needs to be fixed at some point anyway, so they might as well dig into it because this thing deserves to be back on the road. And also the loser switch is only going to run the starter and we need something for the ignition. So let's at least take this cover off and take a look and see how bad we want to tear into it or don't want to tear into it. And I'm guessing, judging by this wire hanging out up here, somebody's looked into this at one point. Ooh, just the push button for the washer. Dang it, somebody stole our radio and our fire extinguisher. They left us the realistic speaker over there. And the, uh, I'm guessing this is aftermarket air, but it was factory because Checker put it on. You may never know. All right, I'm going to pull this cover off and see what we can figure out. The good news is Mojo quit grinding on that brake drum. Bad news is this rod here is hooked up to a switch down there. And that's what your ignition is hooked up to. And... As you can see, the rod is not moving. Also, the turn signal indicator must... I don't know how it works, but it doesn't feel like it's got any detents left in it either. Let's see if we can't trick it by pulling on this switch. We're pushing on it. Still nothing. Oh! I heard it click. Must be a bad connection somewhere. Or a bad starter. Just kidding. Can't be a bad starter. I'm gonna go wiggle some connections, see what happens. Now it's giving a whirl. Nothing. But maybe somebody was messing with this wiring. There. She really zings. I lied about no gauges. It does have a hot indicator. Watch. There it is. She's hot enough. That's hot. 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 I know. You just want to go for an RIDE. We're getting there, boy. We're getting there. Hmm. So long term, I think we need a different steering column in this. I don't, I don't know much about taking these ignition tumblers apart, but I guess that's how you learn is by doing it. Uh, but I think, I think it's the same as like a 73 to 87 Chevy pickup. I feel like there's more of those around that we could just swap right in. And then maybe we could get tilt on one of those. And then we'd really have something. But for the time being, we're not going to do that. We're going to, I guess, stick with the uh, locking players. I was thinking about taking the switch off and then just you can run it with a screwdriver. Because the column is hanging loose so that we can get that locking players in there. And we don't want the column loose when we're out whipping the donuts. So at that point, when we're going to go whip donuts, we're going to have to bolt the column up. And we might have to do away with the locking players. But for now, I think it'll work. We might have to put a loser switch on anyway so we can check for spark and all that good stuff. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, it's broke, but it's it's kind of fixed. Let's go see if we got spark. We're probably gonna need Mojo to help us, and he sounds like he's busy 
blowing off brake drums. Or we gotta hook up a loser switch. Or we gotta teach you to speak. Or push a loser switch. Yeah, you're a lot of help today. All kinds of help. I guess we don't have to check for spark. We could just drizzle a little gas on the carburetor and see what happens. Then we'll know if we got spark. Unless we don't have compression. Maybe that's why it spins over so fast. Wouldn't that suck? We'd have to put that van engine in here with a blower on top. All right, you gonna grab the hot sauce? Thanks, bud. We're gonna need some more hot sauce. What do you think? Ah, uh, Morsky Flick or not? Yeah, we ain't gonna need it. It's just gonna fire right up. They said it ran a couple years ago. Here goes nothing. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Well, that was easy. That was easy. Just needed to bypass the ignition switch, give it some gas. So I suppose we should hook up the boat tank and uh, check on the whole driveline issue they were telling us about. And maybe put some antifreeze in there. Let's fish our fuel line down below. The problem with this brittle old hose is I don't know how much fishing it wants to do anymore. There is not a lot of room in here. It's going to be a tight fit with the blower belt hanging off the front. Jesus Christ. Go to your home. Don't you know where your home is? Why didn't you just go home? That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Answer me! What is that kinked off line? Is that a kinked off tranny line? No, they look like they're coming up this side. They're coming up the wrong side. Any bets on how much cooling it takes? I'm saying uh, about a half gallon or two quarts. Whichever is closest. Three quarts. That was way out. Well, we got a little more uh, brake drum action going on back there. Got the boat tank hooked up. Didn't leave myself enough hose, so if we got to lift this thing up in the air, we're going to have to unhook it. Or let it hang by the hose or set it on top of a cart but either way let's uh give it some fuel see if she's still running for a while we got coolant in it it's nice and quiet it's got oil in it what's the worst that happens hopefully she's low on atf so we don't have to swap a transmission when was the last time we did that that 72 oldsmobile was that oldsmobile That was a, was that a 400 in that thing? I feel like it was. Anyway, cut us. Let's do fuel things. Here goes nothing. Uh-oh. Gonna need a better hose clamp. We got ourselves an old faithful here. Dang screw come right out of it. Surely it can't be this stiff old hose that doesn't want to clamp on. What's this thing? Oh, it's an ideal. Oh, but it's made in Mexico. Dang it. Let's try that. I think we got it. Let's go see if it's pouring out of the carburetor. Nothing pouring out up here. This bolt doesn't look factory. And uh, yeah, somebody adapted some type of throttle linkage. So I got a feeling this isn't the factory checker carburetor just throwing it out there but as long as it works we don't care what it's off of we're not all about the numbers matching checkers here at Marty repair let's give her a whirl see what happens you mean to tell me that this thing's just gonna sit and idle I don't know what you guys had for a view, but <clears throat> things uh, things escalated there. You see where the fuel pump was and was leaking? It was up there. And that fuel line wasn't tight. 
it's in park I thought but clearly it's got a mind of its own and I got the thing shut off in time and tried slowing it down off oh, we had we had a foot and a half to spare before it wiped out the door that was some watch west work type stuff there all right folks that's the dumbest thing i've ever done in the shop yeah we might need sandwich time early today because that was bad uh it was it was slow but that wheel was up there so that's three six nine twelve that thing rolled 12 feet back on me yeah so well, the good news is it's got reverse and the ignition works to shut it off the bad news is when the shifter's in well maybe when i let the steering column hang down it dropped it in reverse either way we gotta gotta check out that shift linkage and we gotta fix the ignition switch that was that was a little a little scary you got a little tore up leaning in the door and reaching for that ignition switch and pushing on the uh locking pliers good thing i pulled it the right way instead of pushed it anyway yeah crisis averted good news is it's like 60 degrees out so if we'd have blown a hole through the door it wouldn't have been the end of the world at least it wasn't 30 below so yeah let's figure out our shift debacle slash ignition switch Whew. are you <laughs> laughing at me this isn't funny this is serious you could have been underneath the wheel okay no more of that let's up the insurance around this place huh Okay. That carburetor is good though. Would you guess what? Drives forward too. These are my brain powers and I would drive it ahead a little bit, shut it off, move the uh, fuel tank. But instead, let's just put the fuel tank on a cart so the car pushes the cart and then we get it in place. And also brakes would be nice, but I'm guessing with that line off, uh, what, I, what I'm getting at is there's no brakes. So we're just starting it. Driving ahead, killing it. You know what I'm saying. But that should be handy. Duff thought of it actually, didn't you Duff? Or watch me drive over my cart, my fuel tank, my fuel pump, and a Milwaukee 12 volt battery. That'll make great content. <laughs> Worked pretty good, eh? Triple A, you know? AAA. Oh, AAA. Hey, I just came from AA. Well, let's do some playing around, see if we can get park. And the way that we're gonna test that is we're gonna start it and hope it doesn't go forward or backwards when it's in a location that I deem is park. Not, not a good idea? Okay. Well, I'm gonna do it anyway. Well, that should be park. Key word there. Could be and i would rock this thing back and forth but it's too freaking heavy and it doesn't roll that easy so i can't just do that the mojo is busy turning uh brake drums so he can't come give us a hand some brakes we could go for a test drive then we tied up the fuel tank but I think I'm gonna order some brakes long term and do it right I'm not saying we're not gonna just give her a once over get the front brakes or a single front brake working for now but I kind of like the fuel tank working so let's get this thing up in the air take a look at the bottom side and that way we can look and make sure that we're ordering the right brakes because I guess they did offer these with discs as well, but this thing surely looks like it's uh, drums. And uh, it's the same shoes front and rear, so 
excellent work on that checker. Let's take a look at this bottom side. And it's three o'clock, so hopefully our order will go out today if we get her placed real quick. Right, Duff? Right. I don't know how heavy this thing is. My lift is like 12,000 pounds, so it shouldn't have a problem with it. The hard part's gonna be finding the center of gravity. Fore and aft. Usually I go by where the door handle on the front door hits the door post or hits that hoist. Well, we got an extra set of doors, so we'll just go by that door handle hitting the lift. That should be good, right, Duff? Make sure our ignition's off. Because this thing runs really good. Don't talk about it, Earl. Quit working. How about you just go inside and place an order for those parts? No? All right. Here goes nothing. Hopefully the first and last checker aero bus that you have this lift. What did he just do back there? Kids these days. stands for supporting a vehicle, but this thing scares the piss out of me. Can we say piss? Yeah. Any strange noises for freaking me out right now. I'm just waiting for the concrete to just unconcrete and that lift to go. I feel like it's gonna go that way, it's gonna go any direction. Better take a step back and look at this thing. How do people say it looks like a international scout? I guess kind of it's made out of the same fridge material that the styling of the scout is made out of. That I don't know. Does it look centered to you guys? I think I should have went forward some. Then you don't really know what's that Dana 60 way and what's, who knows. That is one thing that I don't like about the wildfire lifts is they're a lot slower than the two post lifts, but still beats laying on your back. Right Duff? Right. So what I do know about these checkers is that they're outlawed in most of the demolition derbies up here because they're built like tanks allegedly, so. Let's check that out. As you will notice, I did say it's got a Dana 60 in it. Because when I was putting this stand on there, I noticed that it said 60 on the rear end. Therefore, Dana 60. You gonna give them the guided tour? No? All right. So yeah, not much to this rear bumper for demolition derby. So you're probably gonna wanna find a better one than that. And I don't know how these guys got away with, what is it, 73, four? Anyway, in the 70s when the low impact, what is it, 15 mile an hour, 5 mile an hour bumper laws came into effect, these don't look like they got low impact bumpers. So maybe because it was a, I bet it was a commercial vehicle because the pickups didn't have it. Pickups still don't have it, do they? So I'm guessing it's somebody else's fuel tank that they use. So we got to try to get that out of there. Look at this skid plate. It's got like 10 gauge skid plate with a drain hole. Stack of leaves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two inch wide leaves. The whole frame is boxed. Well, back here it's boxed, so we'll get to the front, but I'm guessing it's boxed up there. I'll have to figure out what that fuel tank is. Comment down below if you know what it is, in case we gotta buy a replacement, which I hope we don't. Uh, the tailpipe, what a hung there. Oh yeah, we got a little mouse house to come out of there. Well some grass anyway maybe not most house but yeah dana 60 you can tell by the six zero right there looks like they just use a almost like a hose clamp but flat metal to clamp the uh, brake line to the diff drum brakes on the rear so moving up front look at this they bridged the bottom of the frame that's what i call it and they got this you know your standard frame and that's where they spliced it and then they put this I don't know, gusset on the bottom, bridging it is what I call it. I'll call it whatever I want. Wow, a pinion seal 
that's not leaking. Some giant Monroe shocks. I think that was a Monroe label on there. Can't tell. Tube cross members. All kinds of body mounts. Three across the back. And then just look at all these body mounts is lined up up there. Plus they got these gussets coming out to the rocker panel. Another body mount there. And then this cross member. Okay, so it isn't boxed up here. But they got this cross member that runs the freaking whole length from the rear end from the leaf spring all the way up front there. Plus that bridging. Yeah, I would say these things were built to take an impact and to last. Here's our rear heater. How many drive shafts we got? One, two. Only two? No, there's a third one up there. Oh yeah. Single exhaust, muffler, way at the back. She's a little rotted out. Park brake cables, it ain't even cut yet. And then yeah, you can see they just took some bolts and bent over. That's what they use for guides for the uh, park brake cable. Pile hanger bearings, I'm sure none of those are any good. Actually, they're pretty decent. <laughs> this is like a four inch tube and then it connects down to a two inch tube. Which, whatever. I guess we'll find the weak link with the supercharger. And this has got the smaller one up there. It is in fact a turbo 400 by the ugliness of the shape of the oil pan. I did notice that the transmission cooler lines come out on the other side of the engine. It looked like up front. Oh yeah, sure enough. There's a splice in there that somebody put in there, a coupler, union, whatever. They do come up here and wrap around. Oh, and then they just jog over. That's what it is. So why wouldn't they just go straight ahead into there? Who knows? Checker. There's our factory fuel line. But yeah, look at these lower control arms. Just a big old chunk of C-channel. I mean, that thing's like three and a half inches tall back there. Plus it's all gusseted up. It's got the, uh, that's kind of like a Ford deal. The tube grass, that looks like it's right out of a Ford. And then they just made these adapters that bolt on there for the uh, Chevrolet engine mounts, the clamshells. But yeah, that looks strikingly Ford. Another tube cross member up here. Could be Mopar stuff or Rambler. I don't know, but we haven't worked on a ton of those. But Ford like to use these tube cross members. Small block Chevy, greasy, grimy. Greasy, grimy, go for guts. Like they all are, but these are definitely fabricated. Those. Don't look like they came factory on anything. They're pretty, pretty crude. Riveted together. So, I mean, there is some stamped material in there, but just giant ball joints, too. Same DLC channel upper control arm. Yeah, she's uh, girthy. Pretty light sway bar, a little disappointed in that, but same deal up front. No uh, low impact bumper. So they must have got away with it because it was commercial. There's our crossover for our exhaust. But look at that. It's all trimmed out all the way back for dual exhaust. So here's our shift linkage. Everything looks good there. That was just me screwing up, trying to kill myself. I'm guessing that was our uh, reverse light. There's the squishiness in the floor. And there's the squishiness in the other floor. Other than that, a little rust in that cab mount. Other than that, the floors are really good, and so are all the mounts. Yeah, yeah. I can get behind that. That should be easy to patch. A little bit of rust in that inner rocker. Not bad. A little rot there. And it's all pretty flat. There is a couple of strengthening ribs in there, but nothing crazy she is the ultra long turbo 400 what is that like a 11 inch freaking extension housing she's a big dog what were we doing under here i don't know checking out the fuel system brakes well that wire probably shouldn't be hanging there so it looks like it's drum brakes if i knew that we can figure out what that steering box is maybe that'll tell you what this front end is out of anyway Drum brakes. I'm gonna go get some parts ordered before we go any further so that they're on their way. Probably won't be here by the time this video wraps up, but 
This thing deserves to get some front brakes in it. Man, that exhaust isn't even in bad shape. Put a muffler and a tailpipe on it. I wonder if Boom Tube's got a bend card for a tailpipe on a checker. Looks like somebody maybe did that in a rocker at one point. Yeah, this side's got a little bit more rot. Oh man, and that's all body mounts on the inside here. Holy cripes. This thing is insane. This thing's built like a tank. And it's not just butt welded there. There's the seam. And there's the seam on the other side. So they overlapped it by a couple inches. She is beefy. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? Hey, there's our blower motor sticking through the bottom for our, I don't know, must be an under seat heater. Okay, well, I'm order some brake parts. Ooh, before I do that, look at these. Okay, there should be a clamp up there and this brake hose should not be spun in a circle. Also, they don't offer brake hoses for these things. So we're gonna have to, uh, hopefully we got something laying around that'll work. That end should be no problemo, just a clip and then our standard 316th brake line. Well, let's see what that side is, but this thing should not be twisted like this. That's a good way for a hose to fail prematurely. A uh, little more rot in the tow board. Dang it, dang it. It looks so good. Yeah, this hose doesn't have a tweak. So that one's gonna last way more longer. Power steering, I think that's a Saginaw box. Who knows, maybe this is their own design and then they put this gusset on there and then they just grafted a Saginaw box and they used to use something in the olden days. Comment down below if you know what front end parts are used in a checker or what they started out as. We interrupt your regularly scheduled shenanigans to bring you this week's Mortski Minute brought to you by none other than Mortski.com. Go check out Mortski.com for the latest swag. We got caps, we got hoodies, we got t-shirts. We got new t-shirts featuring Duff riding in my 1964 Chevrolet and Palace station wagon that I've had for eternity. Please jump on there and snag up those shirts as quick as you can so that I can get that car back on the road. It is in dire need of a suspension rebuild but anyway go check those out new design we got decals we got magnetic screwdrivers we got super scrapers get them they go fast but anyway back to the mortski minute this week's mortski minute is brought to you from the studios of the catalina wine mixer catalina wine mixer it's the catalina wine mixer it's the catalina wine mixer and this week's mortski minute is the checker motor company why not? Because we're working on a Checker Aerobus. So we're just going to do a rough overview of the Checker Motor Company. There is a vast, huge, astronomical, unworldly amount of information about the Checker Motor Company. You would think that these guys were still making cars and have made cars for 150 years, and it's full of scandal and amazing other things. And I, and I just, like, we could go off on tangent. We could make an entire full-length two-hour feature film just on the Checker Motor Company. So Checker Motor Company was actually founded in 1922 by Morris Mankin, I believe is his name. And uh, Morris Mankin created Checker Motor Company by putting other companies together, a merger of sorts. Sorry, that's Morris Markin. Anyway, Morris Markin created Checker Motor Company in 1922 with a merger between Commonwealth Motors and Markin Motor Company in Chicago. And in 1923, that is when they moved it to Kalamazoo, Michigan. Shout out to Kalamazoo for having the best sounding name of any city ever. Well, maybe not the best, but it's right up there. Kalamazoo just rolls right off the tongue. It wouldn't be known as the Checker Motor Company until 1958. And in 1922, Morris Markin called it the Checker Cab Manufacturing Company. Because I'm going to butcher his last name. We're just going to call him Morris. Morris came to the United States as a Russian immigrant in 1913 where he was a tailor of sorts. And that is where he made his millions as he got a giant contract from the United States Army in World War I. He took that money and that's where he developed the Checker Motor Company. And the funny thing is these two companies that he merged actually started as other companies. And when they moved to Kalamazoo, they actually took over two buildings of two other famous automobile manufacturers, the Dort, which I'm well aware of, which we'd go off on another tangent and talk about those. And the Handley Knight Corporation, which I don't know much about those. I'm guessing they're related to the Willis Knight, but 
you're probably going to comment down below what you know about them. But anyway, the Dort, Hanley Knight, their buildings, these guys are no longer in business. Then uh, Morris came in, started creating his manufacturing company there in Kalamazoo after coming from Chicago. Ooh, big shout out to Chicago. I bet the river is still green. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Much like Henry Ford, Morris didn't give you a lot of options when you're ordering a checker cab. You could get them in four colors. Two of them were yellow. There was yellow, canary yellow, maroon, and Henry Ford's favorite, black. And the funny thing is, if you're trying to sell taxi cabs, who are you selling them to? Companies that have taxi cabs. So what did Morris do? He bought the Checker Cab Company in 1929, which is a separate from the Checker Manufacturing Company. And then he also bought the Yellow Cab Company from none other than some Hertz guy that you've maybe heard of before in 1930. And the funny thing is, if you want some crazy history, I knew this about the taxi cab world before I did this research, but look up the history about the taxi cab crimes and things going on in the 20s. See, there was unions and there was, there was people out for blood, let's just say. So go ahead and look that up on your own. It is well worth investigating because... Things were pretty crazy. Speaking of investigating, so when you're making cars and you're selling them to all the companies that you own, which are the only companies out there because you bought everybody out, uh, I believe it's called a monopoly. So the government stepped in and uh, tried tearing them apart, but basically the uh, taxi cab companies and the taxi cab drivers, when given the option to buy whatever car they wanted, they wanted a checker. So it was determined that it was not a monopoly. It was just the best product out there. So after this Monopoly suit in the late 1940s, uh, Morris didn't have full control of the company anymore. Actually, uh, a group of gentlemen, which uh, you may have heard of Mr. DuPont. Anyway, they kind of ousted him out of the company, but he still had the majority of the shares. So he did what any great individual do. I think Henry Ford did something like this. But anyway, he sold off all his shares to E.L. Cord of the... Uh, Cord Automobile fame. And then uh, Cord took over and basically reinstated Morris as the head of the company once again. So now Checker Company is part of the Cord Company, who is part of the ACD group. No, not your ABCs. Auburn, Cord, Duesenberg. So yeah, I mean, they're, they're in some pretty good hands at this point. So anyway, in steps the government. There was an investigation into Cord. I don't know what they did. That's a whole other story. Cord's a whole other story. Duesenberg's a whole other story. Auburn is an entirely another story. I may have got my years mixed up because this was about 1937, which is pretty much the end of all those guys. But anyway, uh, Morris bought the company back. He's in control of everything once again. So now on to the cars, the Checker Automobile, or the Checker Manufacturing Corporation, or the Checker Cab Company, as you will. In 1956, the Checker that we pretty much are all well aware of was introduced. The 1956, all new, with the greatest name ever, the A8. And then from there on, they would go to the A9, the 10, you guessed it, the 11, and the 12. And basically, this A8 is what pretty much rolled through the rest of the manufacturing until 1982. The A9, as we've got here, is basically the same version, but with four headlights instead of two. Some of the other neat things that they came out with the A8 is bolt-on fenders and quarter panels so that they're easily removed to repair or replace. And guess what? The front bumpers are interchangeable from front to rear. So I don't need to find a rear bumper. I mean, I do, but I could use a front bumper. So freaking brilliant. brilliant so we're pretty much dealing with the a9 here which is the four headlight version which is the only real change from the a8 and then the a10 was the same thing but a civilian version because they decided these things are selling so great cab companies regular people probably want this super stylish amazing car that's built to last forever so that's where the a10 came out some other side notes, they use many engines. That's how they got involved with Cord. They were using Cord's engines. They were using Lycoming engines. They were using Continental engines until 1965. Continental was actually selling them engines at a loss because they were such a robust design for the checker cab companies that they were losing money on them. They decided to raise their price. Uh, Mr. Morris decided that 
I don't want to spend more money. So that's when they went to the Chevrolet 230 inline six, or get this, you could step it up to the 283 Chevrolet V8. And that's what they used for the remainder of their time during the manufacturing years. So like I said earlier, the A11 was the last cab model. The A12 was the last civilian model. These were produced until 1982. And the last A11 cab named Janie was still running in New York City until July of 1999. That's right. This thing was on the road for over 20 years. New York City getting beat around where it had just a hair under a million miles. 994,972 to be exact, if you really cared. And this all came into play because New York City determined that cabs could only be in commission for six years. And so that was kind of the end of the old uh, checker cabs being used in the New York City. Uh, funny thing is, Janie was sold at an auction in 1999 for $134,000. Guess what? It was sold twice more. You know what happened after that? It went down significantly. How significantly? It was down to $9,400 at an 06 auction and then $7,700 at an auction in 2015. So I could imagine nine years later, Janie's probably a $3,500 car out there somewhere, but she's probably got over a million miles on her. Some other noteworthy individuals that were involved with the Checker Motor Company was Ed Cole. Ed Cole was uh, previously the head of General Motors Company. He had since retired. He bought in to Checker in 1977 with grandiose plans. What were these grandiose plans? They were manufacturing Volkswagens in Pennsylvania. Not the Beatles, but not the band either, but the other Volkswagen cars. And he was going to buy these cars partially completed, have them shipped to Kalamazoo, and then they were going to stretch them out and raise the roof. Raise the roof. And uh, offer these as checker cabs once again. Unfortunately, Mr. Cole died in a plane crash less than 90 days later near Kalamazoo. So that was kind of the end of that. Anyway, many, many years after creating the checker cab company, Morris passes away. His son, David, takes over. He buys out the company from Ed Cole and some other investors. And now it is back in family control once again. That was until about 2009. That's when the recession hit and David got wrapped up in Ponzi scheme. When you think of Ponzi scheme, who do you think of? Bernie Madoff. Yeah. In that lawsuit, David's name comes up five times as an investor in the old Ponzi scheme. And one of those is the address of the Checker Motor Cab Company. So these guys filed bankruptcy in 2009. At that point, they were pretty much just a manufacturing company making small parts for General Motors mainly, but uh, Ford and some other companies. At that time, uh, the companies basically dissolved. Some companies bought rights to manufacture some of their parts and you can actually or they could they sold off some of the tooling and whatnot. I think it all went to Canada. But anyway, that was pretty much the end of the checker cab manufacturing in 2009. But in 2015, some other investors bought the rights and they announced that by 2018, they were going to be producing checker cabs once again. And because they were such a low volume of cars, they were going to get under the NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration's laws because it was a, a low quantity of cars but as near as i can tell that never came to fruition and uh, they are still offering parts you can buy replacement quarter panels replacement fenders fuel tanks uh emblems stuff like that and they are also offering uh to restore your car for you they offer financing as well check into it or don't and then they uh, also offer appraisals as well. So maybe we'll get them here to come uh, appraise our Aerobus. So there you have it, your Mortsky half hour about the Checker Cab Company. And this was just the high level. There's more stuff in there. They were going to stretch a GMX body. They actually stretched a Citation. And thankfully that failed on us because they were only going to build the Citation for three years. And, you know, Checker likes to run for 40 years. So that got axed. Who wouldn't want to stretch GM Citation? I mean, come on. Anyway, there you have it. Your worthless information that you can share at the coffee table at the local elevator with your local farmers when you're uh, hanging out there on Wednesday morning. So, go check out Mortsky.com. Go get yourself some of this uh, 
Mordsky merch. Go check out those new shirts with our station wagon on it so that hopefully we can get the front end rebuilt so that we can take that thing down to the Lone Star Roundup. Come see us in Austin, Texas, August, August, April 19th and 20th. We'll see you there. Now back to your regularly scheduled shenanigans. All right, brakes are on order. Like I said, you can't get brake hoses, so I'm gonna pop these off, see if we can find something in my stash that's the same as these OEM hoses so that we can hook them up to our new brakes whenever they get here. Well, I guess that was the line that wasn't hooked up. All right, this cable, wire, whatever it is, has gotta go. It's in my way. All right, go dig through the stash, see what we can come up with. That looks GM-ish to me. That looks everybody-ish. All right, let's do the same thing. Get this back one off here. What is going on up there? Is that some type of evap something? Yeah, it must be emissions. Who knows? We're probably gonna get rid of it though. A little bit of rot going on in the rear compartment above the fuel tank. We're just gonna quick look in though. What do we find for brake hoses? Yeah, some good ones. So, in case you weren't aware, Rock Auto sells these brake hoses for, sometimes I get them for like two or three bucks, but usually they're six to 10 bucks. And when I order them, I order double because instances like this. So this is a 72 Ford F100 rear, so this must have went on the rear of my orange four wheel drive. And it's a nice long, I think I used one of these on the 74 D100 because Rock Auto said, sometimes this stuff's wrong. But anyway, uh, 72 Ford rear is gonna be the same. This thing's got like a quarter inch hole going through it and the Ford's got like a half inch hole. So we're gonna either have to put a washer. Ideal thing would be to make a bushing. Ideally, we would have the right hose. Maybe that thread's in there. I bet it does. We might be going back to the drawing board. So this T is copper brass brass and it looks like it's just uh threaded in there so i can use a front style hose like one of these and just thread it in there and i can use that same t so we'll check that out and then on the front i got some 74 d100s and 68 d100s that uh should be the right length for the front so sweet hopefully got that figured out before we hook that brake up, I want to unhook the brake lines and blow them out. And look at this. Oh, you guys probably can't see it, but I found the tag on the rear end. This thing's got 354s. You know, Dana 60 with 354s. It's probably a sought after rear end by somebody. Pretty good highway gear, especially with a 715 highway tire. We should put tubes in those, a couple of them anyway, while we got her up there. I don't like lifting this thing up and down. I haven't done it yet, just lifted it up the one time. So try to do as much as we can while it's in the air. Seemed like a pretty good idea to you there, pal. Duff agrees. All right, let's do some brake line hose things and such. Duff, what'd you find? 54 Merc rear brake hose. It's even a little bit longer, which is better than shorter, but it's got the right ends on it. So, I think they're the right ends. Oh, that one might be bigger. Guess we'll find out. We can always put an adapter on there. Remember the 54 Mercury? Yeah, that was a low point in our lives. Like, are you gonna suck the mice out of that tailpipe? Pretty neat car, got a lot of views. Glad it's gone. It was the same color as this. Not a yellow fan, but yeah, it was the same color. Hmm. All right, back to working on the big yellow taxi cab. I'm gonna try to take these low hanging fruits. These uh, lines are easy to get off and we'll blow them out. Uh, that line that goes from the rear end all the way up to the master cylinder probably not gonna take off because that thing's 
real long. I wonder how many splices are in it. Anyway, I'm going to blow these out. Because now is the time. Carpe the DM sees the time. Carpe the DM sees the car. Look at all that rust splattered on the tire we blew out of there. You probably don't want that in your brand new wheel cylinders. Oh, look at this neat little spring that they got holding the uh, park brake cable to the U-bolt. Fancy. All right, only 14 more miles of brake lines to blow out. Should probably put some brake cleaner in there and blow that through while we're at it. Good idea, Duff. Oh, he's back there. Supervising Mojo, turning brake drums. Man, that guy loves turning brake drums. Someday he'll have to teach me though, so I can do it. We could do it on this thing, because I'm sure these are obsolete. All right, back to doing brakes. Got both these rear axle brake lines blown out. Uh, you know, just your usual crap in there. Surprisingly, there was fluid still in them, so that's a good sign. One of my, not my pet peeves, but I geek out these uh, brass fittings or just any brass fitting in general, I gotta go take them to the wire wheel. I'm not much for cleaning stuff up, but I love the look of uh, fresh, overhauled brass, rebuilt. Anyway, that's all, back to work. So we got the brakes pretty much wrapped up underneath here. We got a let her down and uh, blow some more lines out up top, going to the front, especially uh, there's a union coupler way up the front. There's actually only two unions between the back of this thing and the front of this thing on that brake line. So we got everything blown out there. I'm gonna blow that stuff out up top. And then obviously we're gonna have to either replace the wheel cylinders or check them out and rebuild them because that brake fluid had to have gone somewhere. So what we got up in the air, let's drop this fuel tank and see if she's uh, salvageable. It looks like kind of an interesting design. So the straps are formed and they bolt to the frame, but they also bolt to the tank. All three ace fine thread. They like their fine thread hardware over at uh, the Checker Motor Corporation. And then the same deal back here, the strap ends right here, but there's another strap that goes up top. So I would imagine she's gonna be heavy with that skid plate and that skid plate is welded to those straps. So we're gonna unhook our lines and get the transmission jack so we don't drop it on our foot. And uh, hopefully this thing is salvageable because I have no idea where we're gonna get a replacement. I guess we just uh, run a fuel cell. Let's do this. Last thing we got left is the filler neck here. And this thing, she is rock hard. I don't wanna cut it, cause I don't have a ton of that two inch fuel filler neck hose stuff around. So we're just gonna do it the old fashioned way and just put all our weight on it, hang on. It should fall out of there, right? Gravity, it's your friend. Push back. Tore it up top anyway. And at the bottom. Well, I guess we're gonna be looking into getting some bulk fuel hose on hand. For future reference. Where is my my dang hook to? Since it's already split, let's just nip it in the bottom. I don't hear any fuel in there. It seems heavy, but I think it's because of the skid plate. Going down. Ooh, that's some cobwebs. Be good. Ugh. 
Well, you know what ain't the worst? Look at the situation. We got a little bit of rust in there. I wonder if we can't pressure wash it and uh, we had some evapor rust, but I don't know that we got any. If we did, we wouldn't have enough. But I think it's savable. It's worth a shot anyway. Put some fuel filters on it and run it. So, go run this over the pressure washer. Try to knock all that crud loose. Maybe stick a magnet in there. It's really just over in this corner right there. You get over to the right and to the back, it looks pretty good. But so my theory on fuel tanks are is if it's available, just buy it. Like square body Chevys, they're like 80 bucks. A lot of these cars are 200 bucks. And if you gotta get towed home, I don't care where you're at, 200 bucks don't pay your tow bill. And if you're on the side of the road with the old lady and the kids and it's hot out and your sandwiches are getting warm and your ice cream's melting, 200 bucks goes a long ways. And I don't care what you put in the tank, what you dip it with, what you seal it with, who you take it to get radiator shop to get it cooked out. It's, it's never as good as a new one. And I had pretty good luck with tanks fitting for the most part. But in instances like this where you can't get one, where you don't know what the heck it even is, yeah, it's worth giving it a shot. But by the time you spend 60 bucks on a Vapor Rust and three hours worth of messing around, you could have just bought a new one and then known what you had because likely the sending unit is shot anyway so you might as well take that out and buy a new one of them too so there it is rant over buy a new fuel tank if you can get one. all right i'm gonna like i said pressure wash this thing out we're gonna pull this sending unit out hopefully i got a new gasket for that otherwise we'll have to make one that way we can get the pressure washer in there and wash that out and then we can also uh test that sending unit flat screws what the french well we're gonna attempt it we'll see how many of those i break off in the process and then abandon ship what are the odds any of these come loose let's use our screwed by morski repair magnetic screwdriver to clean the slots out get yours at morski.com and then we'll bring in the big dog screwdriver to clean house. If that don't work, we'll get the locking players. Okay, I just checked online. Uh, Checker Motor Cars has a new one in stock for $700. And if that's new, it's new old stock, but uh, we'll give it a whirl for $700. Bucks. We're not models. No, we're not models. <laughs> Okay, smaller locking players. Let's try the trusty air hammer, screw extractor, finger mobobber. And that snapped off. Uh, I don't know how deep I want to get into this thing. I feel like they're all gonna do that. I do. We're just gonna, that one's on the top. I don't wanna drill and tap and, uh, are we gonna have to? What are we gonna do here? No, nope, we're just gonna leave it. We'll drop it down at a later day. Just make sure she's full. And God dang it, if somebody knows what this fuel tank is out of, let us know. I, I highly doubt Checker had their own fuel tank made up, but. They probably did. Uh, sh 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 I really want to get in there and clean. Well, curiosity got the best of me. I got to see what's going on inside this tank, and we got to get it cleaned out because otherwise it's just going to be a headache. Fuel tank issues, rust issues, debris issues are just headaches forever, and they never go away. So I got the sending unit out. I figured I'd break four out of the five off. How many did we break, Duff? Three. And it doesn't look as good as I was hoping, but it's, I mean, it's, it's doable. I really wish we had some evapor rust, but the nice part is I got the drain plug out, so we can always drain it, put the plug in it, fill it full of ev evapor rust. That stuff works great. We need to get like a 55 gallon drum of it.
I know you've been telling me for a while. And then also there's like a sock at the end of the, the pickup tube. Usually the pickup is on the sending unit. So that's kind of nice that it's not. And also the sending unit is completely wasted. It does have a plastic float, so that part's good, but we'll test it out. Not a chance this thing works, but I'm guessing we can find something aftermarket that works or who cares. Not a very big tank. I'm sure this thing gets great economy with a small block turbo 400 and 354 gears. But I can see the sock for that thing and there's no way to replace said sock, but it doesn't look to be in terrible shape. So I wanted to do this now because once this thing gets fuel in it and fumes, it's gonna be hard to heat and drill and tap and we don't wanna blow our faces off. So we're gonna try to get these things out of there and then go find some more screws and uh, do some pressure wash. We gotta deliver some merch first. So we're gonna take the old 36 Ford pickup to town because it's nice and run some merch, ain't we Duff? R-I-D-E-S's, shop truck things. All right, look at all this fun. Drill bits, taps, heat. Somebody sent us a Mastercraft replacement. It's like everything, it's not as good as the original one. They're getting poorer quality. Taps, extractors, every type of locking players, but I think we're ready to go. So now let's go pressure washer out, eh, Duff? Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Said nobody ever. But at least it's done and should be good to go. Make a new gasket, round up some hardware, and uh, yeah, I hope this thing's good. I'm gonna be super upset if we go put water in and it leaks. Such is life. Guess we'll just order that $700 tank. All right, that tank cleaned up pretty good. There's still a little bit of residual rust in there. I suppose I could show you if you really want to see. So there you have it. Of course, that's the worst spot. And we'll show you inside the sending unit. That isn't nearly as bad. I'm not really worried about that. I did take and run a magnet through there. I got a little bit more out of there. Like I said, we're on a filter. It should be pretty good. Took and tested the sending unit. We did get some resistance, but that fuel gauge only half worked before. It's not gonna work anymore. So we're gonna have to be on the lookout for one of these. Now I gotta take this thing and use it as a template and make ourselves a gasket. Unless you want to. Yeah, I'll take that as a no. What are the odds the one time that I wanna use my transmission jack? There's a transmission on it. All right, let's uh, make a new quart gasket. All right, check this sweet gasket out. Super nice, made out of the old cork. You know, I'll never forget the first time I soaked the cork. Just like they all were, right? Anyway, yeah, I don't know if anybody's, it's like Worcestershire sauce. Has anybody ever used the full roll of these? I think I made two gaskets this year already, which is twice as many as I've made any other year in my existence. But So tech tip for these things, just uh, get yourself some patterns. I think, what do, what do we make this socket for? Oh, the Dana 60 on the big block Chevy one ton uh, four wheel drive. Trace the uh, outer perimeter on that. Uh, inside diameter, what did we use? Oh, this Case IH one inch socket. And then we laid it over that, marked the holes. We lined up our dots there. And then we used, uh, what are these, hollow punches? Hollow punch set, Pittsburgh, from the Harbor Freight for knocking the holes out. These things work way good. Get yourself a set of these if you're ever making gaskets. So, now we find some screws, we can put this thing together, eh, Duff? Yeah, arts and crafts. No fun, but it's gotta be done. Oh, we rhymed like that slime down in Oklahoma that doesn't know how to put a battery in his Model A. Just kidding. All right, uh, but not really. Let's get this thing in there, get some hardware, skid plate. Oh, and we're gonna be done with, ah, oh, we still gotta figure out the fuel filler neck. Son of a biscuit. Yeah. Good luck with that. 
I'll figure something out. I guess if we got to, we'll use a big long funnel to fill this thing for the time being. Well, looky what I found. No idea what this stuff is. Looks expensive with the multicolor, but it's two inch ID and hopefully it holds up the fuel. And really, it's not going to be submerged in fuel very often, except for when it's full, which is hopefully not that often. So, put the skid plate on. Put this thing back in the hole. A little bit of rot in the floor here and the spare tire area. That is the strangest spare tire hump I've ever seen. It even kind of sits crooked, whatever. Alrighty, yeah, this thing was definitely military. OD green at one point. If this thing could only talk, if they all could. All right, fuel tank time. Oh yeah, new hose clamps too. We're going all out on the old checker. All right, we got everything in place, but look at this fuel fill hose. Like we saw that one was kinked. That guy is really kinked. So I'm gonna lower it down, see if we can adjust it and maybe move the whole tank ahead. I don't know, but that would not fill very well. So it's left rear and the right front. They go flat out for a couple days and that's really annoying. So we're gonna take these off, put some tubes in them and we're gonna put radial tubes in them because there's nothing more permanent than temporary tire repairs. Long-term, we'll put some good tires on it if this thing gets, quote-unquote, roadworthy. Ooh, they're right-hand studs. Only missing one lug nut. Let's see if we can find some center caps. I don't have the knobs in there. Oh, these have the clip style. Maybe we'll have to see if we can find some five on five and a half Ford wheels to put on here. So we can get some good wheels or hubcaps or something. But anyway, let's get tires in there. Baby steps. Freaking heavy duty. Seven ace lug nuts. So that means these things must be nine sixteenths, like your Chevelle or your S Ted pickup or your Impala probably are seven sixteenths. Ford's pretty much half inch. Not the old checker. 9 sixteenths. Big boy stuff. These are probably the same as on my one ton Chevy pickups. I'm messing around. Oh, my shoulder hurts already. Here goes nothing. Oh, not too bad. All right, well, we got that wheel off. Let's pull a brake drum off and uh, see how everything looks in there. Even though we got brake parts coming, they're not gonna be here, I'm assuming. So let's see what we got. I wonder how that drum is gonna come off of there. Guess we'll find out. Everything looks pretty good. There's a whole lot of material left on the shoes. The adjusters are loose. No axle seals leaking. So I think we're just gonna slam this thing back together, clean her up a little bit, and uh, run it for now until our new stuff shows up. Worst case scenario, if we got to, we can pull that wheel cylinder apart and rebuild it, throw some seals in there. But I think for now, we're gonna run it. There isn't even any grooves on the drums. We'll see how the front looks. Usually that uh, takes the brunt of it, but pleasantly surprised. 
All right, let's throw her back together and go pull that other front corner apart. Well, looks like we're missing two lug nuts over here. We better do a lug nut roundup. If you're gonna steal a lug nut, steal the ones opposite, you know, so there isn't two missing. This is some Pot County stuff. If What's that guy say? If three didn't hold, one never will? I don't know, he's a silly character. All right, let's uh, fix a tire. You can tell this one was the one that goes flat by the flat spot on it. They are 40% easier to remove when 40% of the lug nuts are missing. What's this? Huh. We may never know until we open the hood anyway. All right, let's pull this front brake apart. Let's see what we got going on in here. Looks like there's some grease in the wheel bearing, so that's always a plus. All right, how's she look? Like a low mileage checker should. Drum looks nice and smooth. All kinds of material on the shoes. Das boot is to, ooh, a little rust in the wheel cylinder. Oh well, I'm sure it'll run. The adjuster is Lewis. Just what I like to see. Let's throw it back together and go from there. All right, just gotta put our cotter key in. I'm gonna grab a new one of those. That last one was a little bit uh, on the short end. Story of my life. And look at this upper control arm. How oh, she's braced up. And then look at that. There's the battery tray. And then there's the battery mount. And they just got like a chunk of, I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's a big, big like C channel. About a five inch lift kit. Pretty crude stuff, but Definitely overkill. That'll do, pig. That'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Now I'm going to pull these brake lines off the master cylinder and blow them out, and then we should be able to hook everything up. Everything should, should be pretty cleanish, kind of, sort of, probably not. I wonder what this looks like inside. Any bets? Ooh. It's bone dry, it looks like. And not too sludgy. We might have a chance. Clean this stuff up. All right, I'm gonna pull these lines off, clean this up, and then uh, we're gonna put some fluid in, see if we got brakes. All right, brakes are all hooked up. I dumped fluid in. I had to, I hooked this line up over here to the left front wheel. I'm guessing we're gonna have some major issues with that wheel cylinder, because that was one that was blocked off. With a grease zerk, that's a new one. Check this out though, it gets better. I don't know if it gets better, uh, or worse. That's a bolt instead of uh, a bleeder screw. So we're gonna take that out and we're gonna put a bleeder screw in there. So, yeah, I don't know, some people's kids. And then once I get a bleeder in there, I already cleaned out those back bleeders. We'll crack them loose. Uh, we'll crack this one loose, clean it all out. Hopefully this thing gravity feeds. If not, it's going to be a, a lot of bleeding. Hopefully my knuckles aren't bleeding and the calluses on my feet aren't bleeding from pumping the brake pedal. But let's get after it. And this is why I have trust issues. You see somebody, a previous owner, if you will, Put this bolt in there. And uh, bolts are straight threads. And bleeders have this little taper at the bottom there, like a needle and seat per se. And that's what seals it up. And then when you crack it open and you break that seal on the needle and seat, it follows through that screw hole or whatever out the end. So it's not sealing around the threads, it's sealing on this seat down here, this taper. 
when you put a bolt in, it's sealing around the threads, and that's not what they're designed to do. That's not what a bolt's designed to do. That's not what those threads are designed to do. And these are probably the wrong threads anyway. And of course, they pull the threads out of the wheel cylinder. So yeah, so it won't take a new bleeder screw. And we can't just JB weld it in there because we have to bleed it somehow. There goes a choo-choo. And yeah, just, I, I don't know what to do other than block off that wheel, which is the right front. And I would kind of, like to have both front brakes with this behemoth of a train that we're driving here. So it's, uh, it's that time of day where it's, it's time for a sandwich and think about it. But I guess worst case scenario, we'll hopefully we'll just have rear brakes. I don't know. But if we can't get a bleeder and that's, I, I mean, I guess we could try putting this back in, but I don't think it's gonna thread back in because the threads are, there's, there, there's two sets of threads on this thing now. But maybe we can get the rears working. Or maybe miraculously Rock Auto will get us wheel cylinders for this thing before noon on Saturday. Anyway, I'm going to have a drink about it. I'll probably see you guys tomorrow. All right, I need a break from the brakes. So we're gonna change the oil while we got this thing up in the air. I think what we're gonna end up doing is just blocking off that right front wheel. We know this one leaks, so we're gonna tear it apart and look at it, or just skip the front and just go straight to the rears. And hopefully they work, because there was fluid in those lines back there, and we know these were unhooked, blocked off, and whatever, because I checked my uh, tracking and uh, Rock Auto still hasn't shipped my parts from three days ago. So not a chance that they're gonna get here in time for this video. But maybe FedEx just shows when it shows up. They don't show anything in between. But anyway, filter, oil, look at this. The drain plug is right over the steering arm. I guess they didn't design the car around the engine. They just tuck an engine in a car that was already designed. But maybe it'll miss that. We'll see. I thought all these were like freaking 916s. This is three quarter. Must be a replacement plug. Who knows? All right. Or should we set the pan? What is that filter? Master brand? Huh. Ouch. PH25. I think we're gonna put what? A B2 or a B6 on there? Don't be stripped out. No, it's just really fine thread. She's real fine. My 5.7. Oh, oh, go. Whew. Nailed the pan. Didn't even barely get any on my finger. How about that? And it misses the drag link. How neat is that? How neat is that? This uh, whole master's been on there a few days. Come on now. Work with me. Uh-oh. This is not gonna go well for my knuckles. Oh. Freaking bent the handle on my tool. This one might be resorting to jabbing the screwdriver through the center of it. Ah. Well, that tool can go right in the trash. All right, we're gonna give her a couple more whirls with the old uh, filter pliers here, and if that don't work, we're gonna have to get the screwdriver, and that makes the mess. Just can't grab onto it the steering here. Give us some room. Oh, yeah. Budging. I can't imagine doing this in a driveway lane on your back. I'd light the car on fire. 
This is what happens when you take your Aero Bus limousine to Jiffy Lube to get the oil changed. You never get the filter back off. I'm sick of oil running all over my hands, so. There. Drain out the center and set out the side. Should be getting loose any second now. Wow. Oh. This will make the fixing the brakes seem easy. Jeez, and rice. Make sure our O ring gasket stayed with the filter. Sure did. So we won't make even more of a mess. Tech tip of the day if you keep the steering wheel straight, it doesn't hit that drag link. All right, time for a new Baldwin. Was it a B2 or a B6 filter? I don't remember. I think it's a 6. Good thing I labeled them. That was when you go grab the impact and you just crank her onto the moon. Never mind Mojo. Writing love letters back there. In stone. Now don't let me forget to dump oil on when we let it down. So instead of using a pressure bleeder, we got fluid at both rear wheel cylinders and didn't even mess with the front because we know how that's going to go. And the pedal feels terrible. I do have the front reservoir blocked off, so I guess once we fire it up, we'll see. And if we got to play at the brakes some more, we play at the brakes some more. But it is what it is. Speaking of what it is, I've got a square body steering column here. And we're gonna play with that steering column. I've never changed one of these lock cylinders, but it sounds like you gotta pull the steering wheel off and do a bunch of other stuff. So I guess we'll try that. This, I don't have a straight column. Everything I got is tilt, and I know from experience that these uh, switches are different. I think the connector is as well. So we'll save this as an absolute backup. That steering column does us no good the way it is, so we might as well rip it apart. I was gonna, I was thinking the steering column said Chevrolet. Oh, it is script free. Usually it would say Chevrolet right there or over in the corner. I'm pretty sure that's just like a 72 Nova or 71 Caprice steering wheel. So let's uh, rip that off, rip it all apart. I'm debating whether pulling it out is easier, but it's probably not. So let's rip into her. And then we can test out our brakes and our fuel system and everything else, all the testing. Is that one of them there uh, mud daubers that Puddin talks about all the time? Whoops. I wonder if this thing came from the south. Because we don't have the mud daubers up here in Podunk. And I didn't go that far into the meth state to find this thing. I'm on meth. So allegedly, there's like a little tab in here that you push. And uh, this guy comes out of there. But I'm not, I'm not seeing the tab. It does, however, it look like there's a gear on the end of this, and it's like a rack and pinion. How's that go? This gear turns, moves that rack. And uh, the gear is stripped off the end of the key, because that looks like it's made out of some type of plastic. You just gotta figure out how to get that key out of there, and how to get a new uh, piece of plastic on there. Just that easy. Just that easy, kids. Hey, what's that? Is that it? Is that you? Oh, dang it. Oh, progress. Let's get a pry bar. 
can really make the opposite of progress. Is that Congress? Oh, I got her slid out about a quarter inch. And then she stopped. Well, I'll tell you what, at least it's a comfortable seat to sit in while I do this. I can only get it to go about a quarter inch. One eternity later. I tell you what, this could be a full two hour length video on working on steering columns. I finally got that gear out of there. Don't ask me what I did different. I just kept depressing that little tanger there and sliding it back and forth. And finally, better slide out. I may have used the lock and pliers to hang onto the key. But all this does is turns this which in turn turns the rack, slides the rack back and forth, which is hooked to that rod. So in theory, we could put this thing all back together now, and we just have to reach through there with a screwdriver and then pry that back and forth. But we want to be able to kill it safely, so I'm going to see if we can't find one of these gears. GM kind of missed there by making this gear out of plastic. Pot metal would have been better, but, I mean, come on. Let's make it out of steel or something that's going to last. It's funny, as many square bodies as we've done over the years, I've never come across this in my travels. I've seen a lot of people with Mojo's pickup out there has a lock and pliers latched on the uh, push rod. So his probably has the same issue. So we could fix his, but I don't really want to take apart another column because then that column's junk. And who's to say that this is going to be the same? Who's going to say that this is going to fail in a short amount of time? So I'm trying to see if I can find somebody who's got one out, but I'm not having any luck. But yeah, that's all you got to do. Flat screwdriver, lock and pliers, push that little tab in. And you do it all through this little hole right here. You go through there with your... Mortsky magnetic screwdriver, get yours at mortsky.com, push in on it, pull her out. It's It sounds easy, but it's, I swear, it's not, it's miserable. These columns, GM columns, are miserable. Terrible to work on. So, yeah, need to find some parts. Unless you tore that other steering column apart for me. While I was doing this, not so much. Hey, wake up. Did you uh, take that steering column apart by chance? No. Oh, silly pup. Just can't get any work out of you. All right. Well, I guess we'll go dig into another one or something. I did a little digging on the interwebs, and this tumbler gear is 69 to 77. That column I got over there is an 81 or an 82. And I don't want to tear that column apart to find out that it's different. So we're just going to rock it for now because I can get one of these gears on Amazonia. And really I can put the whole column together and I can slip that gear on the tumbler and just whammy it in at any given point. And they're like $20. So we're just winging it. I did have one vehicle in the yard that should have had the right one. Sure enough, it was busted. And we did a video. I forgot. It was like a... 76 or 77 three quarter ton orange four wheel drive four speed i reached in saw the key was on i was like oh hey yeah she stripped out it's all coming back to me now so i have run into this before anyway short story long we're gonna bolt that column back up put the uh turn signal cam back in place put the steering wheel back on and hopefully we can run it through this lock cylinder with a pry bar or a Mortsky screwdriver or something. We can't get parts in time. And Napatod doesn't answer his phone. So the more you know. This really probably wouldn't be a bad job to do now that I've done it. But the first time you do this, it is absolutely miserable. And the next time I do it, I'll probably remind myself that that was miserable. 
GM steering columns. Pinnacle of engineering. I can't imagine how many millions of dollars mechanics have made over the years repairing these silly GM columns. Seems like that's all they do is break, wear out. At least this isn't a tilt. The tilt ones are horrendous for getting loose in the tilt. That's what Mojo said is wrong with his is his uh, linkage is worn in the tilt part and that's why his key switch doesn't work. Not because it did what this did. So they must have changed it after 77. They figured out they had a problem and then they uh, improved it. I think they were using that style all the way till like what, 94? They were pretty much using the same thing. So 69 to 94. Holy crap, that was a pretty good, pretty good run for the old GM ignition switch column dealio boppers. All right, let's get this thing slammed back together. Carry on with our lives. Just gonna leave the steering wheel loose for now because I might get ambitious enough to clean it off or better yet find a different wheel that's not sticky. But look at this. Hopefully you guys can read this. On the keychain it says record number and destroy tag 09C0. Yeah that looks kind of military-ish. That's pretty neat. All right I guess we gotta figure out what we're gonna do next. Not clean a steering wheel. Earlier. Let's take a look at the inside of this thing. It needs a couple pieces of glass. I don't know if these are original seats. That tweed seems like later. And then I'm guessing when they painted it yellow, they maybe did the seats, but the carpet's pretty good. Got a couple of holes in it. A little bit of a padded dash there. Not much of a padded dash. Add on air. Somebody got the radio kick panel speakers there's your heater controls not much to them what's behind door number two? Oh my mountain dew coloring books what is this a children's problem solving book i want it Ooh, fighting over the tonka trucks oh problem solving not like i was thinking like the other problem solving like oh like fighting over stuff Ooh, oh oh did somebody rent? This is a good one. Creation of the universe. SDSU Instructional Technologies Center. That's some riveting stuff. Anyway, I'm guessing all these seats originally sat forward. So this is weird. I'm guessing what they were doing was using these two doors and climbing in and facing each other in the back because I'm guessing there should have been four rows of seats facing forward. The seats are in pretty good shape. Door panels too. Some type of A-pillar cover that doesn't fit this thing. Never mind my gas can and my booster pack. And then you see they got that seat back there. And then there's this heater in the middle, which would have been underneath a seat. And then no headliner. Looks like it was just that fiberboard stuff. And oh yeah, multiple dome lights. There's a dome light on every row. What a deal. It doesn't smell in there. There's no dead critters on the seats. We just need one more uh, bench seat and then turn them all the way that they should be. Well, here, this will tell us. Oh, yeah, they didn't put new carpet in. It's got the notches from one of the seats we're facing the other way before. A wheel for your shop back. Yeah, and we got those doors tied shut because that latch does not want to do latching things. There's the rear heat up top, divider back there. All the good stuff. Yeah, she's pretty good, interior-wise, for us anyway. I don't know if we can get this open. Oh, it's got a roll down rear window. What a deal. Ooh. Oh, oh, she's she's stripped. We're just we're just gonna get that back up to where it needs to be and leave it. Oh, there's the tail light in there. Must go there. Looks like some gloves, OJs. Oh, there's the radio. 
yeah, some spare parts. So yeah, I guess there's the inside of that thing. Uh, you can guess what I did next. Try to dump fuel in the fuel tank and uh, forgot the drain plug. Put that in there and it continued to leak. So I guess we'll be fixing a pinhole. Funny we didn't see that when we had water in it. Son of a biscuit. All right, there is our culprit. It's a pretty good one. And now it's got gas in it. We can't weld it up, so we're gonna use the old uh, screw and a rubber washer trick. You could use soap too, but that works better on seams or small leaks. That's a pretty good. That's like an eighth inch hole. So, and uh, if you were to weld that, it's just gonna keep spanning. So we're gonna do the right thing and just cobble it together. Didi, Didi Schmoo Shop. You know what works really good? Uh, I can't think of the name of the stuff. I'll think of it. I'll grab it here, but there's some uh, schmoo that works for gas and oil we could try, but we're not doing that today. Screw it is. Got to pile these tin screws around. See if that'll do the trick. You don't want to strip it out. Just enough. Oh, she's stripped. We're going to need a bigger screw. Dang it. Seal all, that's the name of the stuff. So, I suppose these are the same diameter. We might be overstepping our boundaries for the ability that we got here. This is for pinholes and we're, these are big holes, singular. Just one for now. Soon to be more, no doubt. All right, we need bigger sheet metal screws. Back to the drawing boards. Well, if it's good enough to patch a radial tire, it should be good enough to patch a fuel tank, right? Just cram that guy right through there. Big washer. We'll see what happens. No guarantees. Ooh, I'm gonna put a big washer on that too. That'll help, for sure. All right, big old fender washer. We'll see what happens. Cross your fingers. Don't do this at home, kids. You know, we should probably clean that up. I don't wanna do it with a wire brush because, you know, spark and fumes. So super scraper it is. Get yours at Mortski.com. We got the SS ones back in stock, so hurry up. They don't last long. Here goes nothing. She just spinning. I think it's because we got too coarse of threads on there. We need a, a finer thread self tapper. Is there such a thing? Plus we need the right diameter as well. We're picky. All right, we're gonna risk the biscuit for you folks. Got the safety glasses on though. We're, we got some seal all here, new in the box. Had some on the shelf. I don't know what the shelf life is on this stuff and we're gonna have to get some new stuff coming. I think once you open it, you're screwed, but. Look at that, it's got a gas can on it, so you know it's good. But we want it to adhere real nice. Or maybe you want something for it to grab to, leave it rusty. Either way, we're cleaning it up. I figure the flames are just gonna shoot out right here, so if I keep my face off to the side and away from all the orifices, we should be okay. <laughs> I'm in danger! And boom goes the dynamite. Maybe a wire wheel instead of a flap disc. Less sparkage. Ah, too late now. Time waste to die. If 
If you're gonna be dumb, you gotta be tough. So, now, you know what we're gonna do? Ugh. I thought we'd put this down and then schmoo this all up with seal all. But I think what we're gonna do is just put this in there and schmoo the head all up with seal all. Maybe put a little dab underneath there first. Yeah, yeah. The mechanic's choice. Automotive contact, adhesive, and sealant. Quick set, easy flow formula. Gas and oil resistant for use on metal. Most plastics and many other substrates. Substrates? Substrates. I'm gonna need to, oh, frick. I'm gonna need to absorb some substrates after this stupid hit. The stuff does get pretty hard, it takes a while. Whew, you can catch a good contact high off of this stuff. Okay, that didn't work at all. Oh, we need Didi Hack Shop here. He is the professional schmooer. Just so we're 100%, this is like race car stuff, that's what they do. Well, I guess we're gonna let this set up a while and uh, go do something else. Not a paid promotion by Seal All. What do I do with the cap? Not like it's ever gonna work again. Son of a biscuit. It's definitely gonna be no good if I can't find the lid. Chin, instant replay, where did it go? I feel like I dropped it on the floor. Found it. There we go. Now we'll just uh, put this back on the shelf, ready for next time. What are the odds the cap comes off? Not very good. Oh, she's still pretty tacky yet. All right, well, we let that set up. Let's figure out a belt situation because we're going to want the power steering because I'm guessing this thing is going to require 92 point turns for everything. I did put oil in it, so we should stick a dipstick in it. I grabbed a dipstick in a tube from something from another blown up engine we took out of something and we'll put that in there so it should be correct because we got five quarts oil in there pretty much all the small block chevys that i've dealt with take five quarts so should we go there let's get this power steering belt thing figured out they're not running true and maybe we'll get rid of that smog pump probably not i don't know if we got enough time but this belt is running upside down. Oh yeah, that's it. There's a power steering belt that's hanging off. Yeah. Well, I think our fan belt and our alternator belt is also the smog belt, and that one looks like it's where it needs to be. But we may as well just get rid of the AC belt, because let's be honest, that probably doesn't work. The compressor is free though. That's pretty rare, but we don't, we ain't worried about that because it's like 50 degrees outside. We do want power steering. And I feel like the way that this is routed and going over the power steering, it's, it's probably not gonna work. She's gonna squeal anyway. So let's address the belt. Did you get that belt dressing joke right there? Uh -huh. No need to thank me. Maybe we can just Get it to roll back on. Oh yeah, this AC belt's in the way. If the AC did work, this belt would not last very long. She's rough shape. I got the resolution for that right here. That's another thing. GM's made a million different power steering pumps and brackets and everything, and they never adjust very well. Especially when you get combination of AC in there so that's in the way and so I'm gonna spend the next 15 minutes looking for the hardware we got to loosen up and we'll see if we can't get a belt on that thing I think yeah while I'm at it I am gonna put a new belt on there and we'll put a new fan belt on maybe that one don't look that bad we'll see we'll see what's in the budget first we got to get it off there and find one that fits
Alrighty, belts are on. What a lovely design. You guys know I complain about everything, but power steering adjustment. Like, all I need to do is like put a little square hole in there so you can put a three ace ratchet on there and tension it that way. But no, you gotta figure out a place to put the bar. Anyway, they're on there. I put two belts on there. I've never seen a double groove pulley actually use. I see a lot of them, but it seems like there's never two belts on the power steering. I don't know if it never existed or what, but let's uh, put an alternator and fan belt on there because if we lose that, we don't get charging and we don't get uh, coolant flowing and we don't get a fan going over radiator. So that's a pretty important one. And then that smog pump isn't hooked up to anything. So it's just dead weight hanging there, basically an idler. So let's get that thing out of there. Don't worry, I'll throw it in the back. So when we take it to Barry Jackson, the next owner can say it's an unmolested 40,000 mile came from the strip in Vegas, whatever they want. But let's get that smog pump out of there instead of getting a belt that fits with the smog pump. We're gonna get one that fits without. Smog delete, the mini little, uh, maybe a supercharger because it's belt driven down there. Think about it, that's what it is. This should be fun. No doubt it's tied into the alternator mount. Maybe not. Oh yeah, it most definitely is. I'll dig into it a little bit more, but I think it's, uh, I think she's gonna stay. Well, that wouldn't be so bad to take off. I talked myself into it. We gotta free up all the horsepower so that this thing has off. We need to check the numbers. I wonder what GM stamped these things as, cause it's kinda like a over the counter crate engine, but I'm sure they were sending freaking truckfuls of them over. Michigan where they built these things. Where would we say? Kalamazoo. What's going on in Kalamazoo these days? Police in Kalamazoo are investigating a third deadly shooting within a week. I feel like it was a big manufacturing town 60 years ago. Kalamazoo saws? Was that a thing? Did they make some type of... Oh my gosh, it's so tight. Some type of shop equipment? Not messing around, we're getting out the big dog gear wrench. I can really bust my knuckles on that giant battery tray. Oh. You know, if one of these snaps off on the water pump, I'm gonna be real on that. Oh yeah, these got smog pulleys at both. Ooh, she turns rough too. Glad we're getting that off of there. That'd be my luck. That thing would smoke our fan belt, leave us sitting. These things got a bolt-on pulley. I always forget about that. It ain't pressed on. Let's take that off. All right, we got that thing out of there. That was that was a pain. This bolt wouldn't come all the way out because it hit the fan shroud, so we ended up having to take this bracket off. One of those has the ground strap on it, and the other one, oh, it's got the fuel pump rod. Make sure you put that bolt back in there, otherwise you're gonna have an oil leak. So we put a shorter one in there, hook the ground strap back up. I don't think this thing's been uh, working for a while. Looks like she's got some issues. We uh, also got rid of a couple of vacuum lines that we're operating at, apparently. Now I got to find a belt. We can't use our old belt for reference, and we can't use it for that either. So I got to do some guesstimate. See, alternator, super easy. Just stick a pry bar through there, pry up against the uh, alternator. Super easy to tension. Speaking of attention, we better give some attention to this wiring. I'm guessing this is our power wire. And this is probably our Excite wire. I call it the Excite wire. It uh, gets power in the keys on, tells the alternator to charge. Otherwise, your battery goes dead, I think. Anyway, we got some figuring to do there. All kinds of extra wires. Interesting. Well, I guess we'll figure it out. There we go. Alternator fan belt is on there. So we got all new belts. Should be good to go there. I'm gonna give it a little whirl hooking this up. I think I'm just gonna go battery with this guy. 
and uh, go inside and check with the key. Obviously, we're going to hook the battery up, but I think this is the only one I'm going to hook up. These other ones I feel like are add-on accessories. This one's been taped up, so I didn't want to use that. But that's a job for tomorrow. It's a nice night, so we're going to go cruise in the Model 8 Coupe. Eh, Duff? Go for a ride in the Coupe? Dang right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Went for a little cruise in the Model A last night. We're back out here today. It looks like the seal all set up, so hopefully that seals. And if I don't, we're going with the tried and true boat tank once again. All right, I'm sick of pulling this fuel tank in and out. Let's do this. And this is why I always buy new tanks if you can get them. Stuff like this. Moment of truth. Let's see if she holds some petrol. I really hope it does. There's a lot worse tanks to pull out, but I'm sick of pulling this one out. And I really wish there was a replacement available. That wasn't $700. Shh. I don't hear anything yet. So you're saying there's a chance. Good old see all. I can't believe that there's only one pinhole in this tank. Usually, when there's one, there's like 13 more. Get lucky once in a while. I don't know if I'm going to dump the entire six gallons in there. I feel like that's a waste because there's going to be a leak. So far, so good. We just about got the whole six gallons in there, or what was left from what we didn't spill earlier. I mean, safely contain and recycle. And there you have it. One seal all gas tank repair. That stuff legitly works. Not a paid promotion. Go check them out. Walmart used to carry them. I think I get mine off Amazon now. I even think Menards has some. Ah, I like that. No drips, no puddles. Dry as a baby's bottom, right? Yeah. I don't think that's how it goes. So I did hook up the big power wire on the alternator. That little green wire with the spade clip doesn't have power with the key on, so we're just gonna hope it's a self-exciting alternator. See if it charges. But that being said, it's got coolant. Furnace is gonna kick on. Let's see if this thing will fire up. Oh yeah, the dipstick, I, I couldn't get the tube out of the block. I didn't try real hard. We know it's got five quarts in it, so it should be good to go. Let's fire this thing up. Let's drizzle some hot sauce on the carburetor. Hopefully it'll run off that and by then it'll pull it out of the tank. The fuel pump on this thing is super rusty, but that doesn't mean the diaphragm on the inside is dried up, right? So hopefully that thing's got a lot of power to suck 42 feet worth of fuel up. Probably gonna wanna make sure we got her in park this time. We need to be driving through the garage door. That fan moves some air. The old flexi fan, getting her done.
Train is full. She's not the blackest transmission fluid I've ever seen, but it's not bright red. So let's uh, see if the brakes work. See if it goes forward. See if it goes backwards. We might get close for an RIDE, eh? Well, we got forward, we got reverse, we kind of got brakes. I think I'm going to spend a little bit more time. We get Mojo over here to run the brake pedal. Bleed those brakes a little bit better, but we got a pretty good start. And really, it seems like it runs pretty well, so yeah. Quiet exhaust, fuel tank ain't leaking. I think we might have to give her a whirl. Did a little bleeding action on the brakes, the right rear pouring out fluid so that's gonna be real good fuel tank also decided to start dripping so well, let's hurry up and go for a test drive hopefully this tranny holds up because remember that's what the previous owner said is it needs a transmission it goes forward and backwards for me but let's go test this thing out before we leak out all of our gas let's burn it out instead of leaking it out and uh let's not run into anything because the brakes are only gonna be there for a while brakes are here for a good time not for a long time also, I gotta figure out where Duff's at. We had the door open to let the exhaust fumes out, and uh, he exited stage left. Is it stage left? His loss, not mine. Might be a little brisk out there. Better throw my stocking cap on. And she's bright too, so gotta grab the sunglasses. Where do you suppose Duff is gonna sit? In the passenger seat, or is he gonna roam around and all that? Room for activities out back. Oh, I should, should put gloves on. GM steering wheels. Ah, here goes nothing. Come on. She runs good though. Mirror, not so good. That mirror looks like you're looking through a prison cell. Two pumper would be an understatement. We'll go for a ride. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Found him. Well, it's got reverse. steering it doesn't got. What do you think Duff? We were debating whether you were going to ride up front here or you're going to ride in the back. Oh yeah these brakes are uh, real good. Said nobody ever. But hey the tranny's working. I mean said the transmission was out. Hopefully that's not foreshadowing. The vibration in the old uh, headliner. Need to put some sound deadener up there. Some fat mat or kill mat. Or... I don't know if we got enough brakes to take her out on the open road. Let's see if we can stop her here. I guess it slows it down. 
take her easy on the way around the block. All right, Harry, we're really doing it. We're really doing it though, aren't we, buddy? Shifted into second. My fingers have grown a second skin. The old tires are pretty square spotted. You definitely does this thing do that? This is almost to the spot where we made it with the old uh, van. What's your problem? Fuel pump quit? Oh my word. dead on a major US highway. So, uh... <laughs> That's, uh, not so good. Oh, we're in the field by this approach. I bet we can make it to the other approach closer to the house and just shoot across the highway. Now we're talking. Worst case scenario, we're out in the middle of a stubble field, broke down in a taxi cab. Hey, damn it. Yeah, something ain't Any ideas, Duff? Two weeks in a row where small blocks and HEIs with fuel delivery issues have really kicked our butt. As jacked up as this column is, the neutral safety switch works. How about that? Good starter. Ah! So excited about this thing. That long wheelbase just soaks up the bumps in the stubble field, though. Hopefully, we don't get stuck in a low spot. Logan's got some rocks out here to pick. Oh, we're cruising now. The speedo does work. Second. Stubble bus cruising. That's what we call this thing, the stubble bus stuff.
Yeah, she only gets uh, so much fuel. Good times, ah, Duff, good times. All right, well, we're waiting here. Might as well uh, oh, go get some pictures for the uh, Instagram or the thumbnail on the video. Yeah? Okay, you hang out here. Cripes almost got in the wrong door. All right, she's a little mucky out there. Hopefully we can drive out of this. If we get it to run again. I'm sure it'll run, right Duff? It's quadrigy. you. I had to die in the low spot. When you goose it, you can feel her dig down. Oh boy. Hey, the fuel gauge is, is moving up and down. Right at a quarter, which which is empty though, unfortunately. So maybe that's what it is. So is that five gallons wasn't enough? Between what leaked out and the void at the bottom of the tank. You get a lot of time to uh, think about your life decisions. When you broke down in the middle of a stubble field in Podunk, North Dakota. All right, let's go. I hope it doesn't die in the middle of the highway at a 90 degree. That would be the end of the Aerobus. New world record, we made it two and a half, three Aerobus lengths. I think that was like three and a quarter. Wait, still running. Hasn't died yet. What are we gonna do? Is this thing worth putting a fuel pump on? Putting a boat tank with no brakes? Probably not. Because then if we schmuck it up with no brakes, it's going to be hard to find a checker cab front clip. Well, now I don't even want to start anymore, Duff. Are we sitting at enough of an angle that all the fuel slosh to the other side of the tank and won't pick it up? Could be. It would be great if we could like tag team this like... I could run the throttle, you could run the shifter. I get it. No thumbs. You don't need thumbs to run the shifter, I don't think. Just whammy her down in the low range. Good starter, though. And a good battery. Dave's not here, man. Really hooked us up. That battery is top notch putting in the work well how are we going to retrieve this thing skid steer tow truck i don't think it'll fit on the rollback i don't know if i want to bring the tow truck or the rollback out here probably sink out of sight Definitely a fuel issue. All right, walk of shame it is. Dang damn it. Little breezy out. So everybody's like, put some cameras outside the car, fly a drone, get all that footage. I'm just trying to like, not get in an accident and to make it there and back in my car. Duff, he's gonna go check for some birds in the slough. And, you know, it's already conspicuous enough when we got a giant yellow school bus driving around on the road with 
out of date tags and no tail lights. But yeah, so if you had a bunch of cameras stuck to it, and then who's gonna fly the drone? I can't even drive the car. So there you go. That's why we don't have all the outside footage, because I'm one person just trying to make a vehicle run. And I can't even do that. Oh, walk shame. Oh, boots are getting a little heavy with the mud. I'm gonna have to go tell Mojo. He needs to help us get that thing home. I guess we could put the old Yankum ropes on the back of the Axpedition. That might work. It's definitely too early to be having a sandwich to figure it out. All right, we gotta push back in the shop. Mojo had to steer this thing in because it was a ways away and there was traffic and anyway. I think that's where we're gonna wrap this thing up. We gotta do something with the brakes. We gotta do something with fuel. I think I can put a fuel pump on it and then just run a boat tank like we always do. But we got no way to fix the brakes. A couple parts did show up today and by a couple parts I mean like one wheel cylinder. So we still got the other three to do. Then we need a master cylinder and all that, but I think with a little bit of work, this thing would be a pretty, pretty good car. Obviously, it needs a fuel tank. I'm thinking we got a fuel pump issue. I'm sure it needs a tune-up carb kit, tailpipe, brake work, all that. But so, comment down below. What do you think we should do with this thing? Should we, should we sell it? Should we, should we lower it? Put some big old wheels and tires on, or should we put some like 33s hanging out the back? I don't know. Put a Cummins in it. Put a supercharger on it. Could be, or maybe comment what you want to do with it or maybe you want to own it price and availability in the video description this thing is cool it's it's really actually pretty dry uh parts availability is is kind of a thing that you got to deal with on these things like that fuel tank is going to be a little interesting but you could always get a custom made one or try to find something else that would interchange but it's a pretty cool car it's pretty rare like i said it's super dry it's pretty dang straight for what it is so yeah i'd love to keep it but this thing takes up a lot of room. And what am I gonna do with it? It's not like you just jump in and go get ice cream, unless you bring your 12 buddies with and get ice cream, so. I think that's where we're gonna wrap her up. Thank you very much for watching. If you uh, know any information about Checker Aero buses, comment down below. There's gotta be a Checker uh, limousine and uh, taxi cab junkyard somewhere. Where did all these things go? Did they all get crushed? There's gotta be a bunch of them stashed away somewhere we can get parts from. But. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Check out other videos. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Go get yourself some Mortsky merch at Mortsky.com. We got caps. We got t-shirts. We got hooded sweatshirts. We got church keys. We got magnetic screwdrivers. We got scrapers on hand. Hurry up and get those before they fly off the shelves. We got banners, magnetic can koozies. You name it, we got it. If we don't got it, you don't need it. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done. As long as you're having fun. That was a pretty short-lived ride, but it was fun though, huh? Kind of blocks the visibility, but new fuel pump and a fuel tank. And she purrs like a kit.
uh, we take a break from your regularly scheduled shenanigans, not for a Mortski minute. What kind of a Mortski minute? But we are in the rollback here. Speaking of fuel tanks, wait, come on, give me a break. I'm busy here, I'm working. I'm gonna turn my phone off, okay? Uh, speaking of fuel tanks, we got farm fuel out here, diesel fuel. And uh, a buddy of mine has a fuel tank for sale. And we're gonna go pick that up so that we can have gasoline at the farm. Cause it's an election year, so fuel is cheap, and it just went up like God, it was 269, and I think it's 319. So you know it went up 50 cents. So I might as well stock up now instead of when it was 50 cents cheaper. But anyway, I've I've wanted to get a tank out here for gas for a while because we're always putting gas in cars like these, and I gotta do it with six gallon jugs, and then I gotta run to town where this way we can just take a six gallon jug and just run out to the tank, or we could pull the car or whatever it is we're fueling up the side by side. The rollback, which has a half tank of fuel, we only gotta go, it's about, it's probably 40 miles round trip. Speaking of that, half tank, uh, we got 89 miles on a half tank of fuel, but this thing doesn't have a big enough tank. It's like a 17 or a 20 or something like that. I think it's a 20. Anyway, this rollback, super handy. Well, we're getting the bugs worked out of it. But anyway, let's go get a fuel tank loaded up. And of course, the Duff man is coming with the dirty up my seat. Super cool, got us all loaded up. We're gonna have to head back home and clear a spot for this thing and get her wired up. And then we'll have uh, gasoline available for people to uh, try to steal. Should be great. Good thing I got a guard dog with no thumbs. All right, let's head her back to the ranch with our new fuel tank. Freaking handy is this rollback, Duff. Got her tipped up in the air, use a telehandler, handler hung her over the edge. This thing had uh, diesel fuel in it. So we're gonna drain out what's in there and we'll have to clear out a spot for it and fill her up. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to go to town and get a short-term loan to fill that thing up. A thousand gallons. So three thousand-ish bucks to fill that up, but I think we put 40 miles on and we burned a half tank of fuel in this rough riding cob. So this is why we need this thing out here. Because otherwise sometimes I gotta run to town to fill these things up and it's and then I gotta turn around and go back the other way. So not only will we get a little bit of a discount on fuel. It'll be the convenience will be the biggest thing. Because I was just talking to Chin and I think I fill up anywhere from three to five times a week with gas. Just because a lot of these things have small tanks, plus we're filling six gallon cans and all that. Yeah, so there you go. 